In this video, we describe the endovascular technique of cerebral dural sinus venous tending. A 37-year-old lady with idiopathic intracranial hypertension of one and a half years duration was referred to us. Her body mass index was within normal limits and she was compliant with astrazolamide 500 mg BD per day. However, she continued to experience headache three to four times a week, seven on 10 score, along with an intermittent blurring of vision. On examination, fundoscopy showed papyridema without any focal deficits. A CSF opening pressure was 34 cm of CSF. Time of flight venography showed bilateral transverse sinus stenosis. The right transverse sinus appeared dominant compared to the left side. As only one dural venous sinus required to be opened to resolve the CSF outflow obstruction, only right sided dominant transverse sinus stenting was planned. A T2 weighted axial MRI scan showed tortuous bilateral optic nerves without any other abnormal findings. A right radial artery axis was obtained for arterial angiography. Similarly, a right femoral venous axis was obtained. A right common carotid artery injection of contrast showed good flow in the right hemisphere and the venous phase shows a stenosis at the right transverse sinus sigmoid sinus junction. The venous guiding catheter was placed in the jugular bulb and a distal axis catheter was navigated up to the level of the dural sinus stenosis. The distal axis catheter encountered an obstruction at the transverse sinus sigmoid sinus junction. After connecting the SL10 microcatheter to a pressure monitoring line and calibrating it, the microcatheter was navigated into the superior sagittal sinus and then pulled back incrementally into the jugular bulb measuring venous pressure at different points along the track. The normal central cerebral venous pressure gradient from the superior sagittal sinus to the tocula averages 1 mm of mercury and the total cranial gradient from the superior sagittal sinus to the internal jugular vein averages 5 mm of mercury. Initial dural sinus venous measurements in the superior sagittal sinus were 28 cm of mercury. SSS pressures in patients without IAH should be less than 16 to 18 mm of mercury with total cranial gradients of less than 5 mm of mercury. That is the pressure difference between the SSS and the internal jugular vein is normally less than 5 mm of mercury. In our case, there was a 19 mm mercury gradient at the proximal transverse sinus, it was 22 mm of mercury and at the transverse sinus sigmoid sinus junction, the pressure was 3 mm of mercury showing a significant transtenotic gradient. Over the microwire, a 5 mm angioplasty balloon was tracked up till the stenotic site. A left CCA injection was obtained and angioplasty of the stenotic site was obtained or performed at 10 atmospheres to open up the stenotic site. The balloon was then deflated and removed. Over the wire, an Abbott exact 8.6 into 40 mm tapering self-expanding nitinol stent was deployed across the stenosis. After noting good expansion of the stent, the microcatheter was withdrawn and a check angiogram was obtained. Arterial angiogram showed good flow through the stented area without any areas of poor stent expansion or crimping. Non-contrast axial CT scan shows a fully expanded well-positioned stent in the right transverse sinus and there were no parenchymal abnormalities. Axial and sagittal scans, CT scans with bone windows show good positioning of the stent within the right transverse sinus and no other abnormalities.